9. Floyd and Justin Beebe's Floyd Beebe's made headlines in 2008 when he was arrested and his mugshot was published, revealing a tattoo on his forehead that said, Get her done. He told the smoking gun that he also had a tattoo on the back of his head that said, Got her did. The forehead tattoo reportedly cost $125 and took about 40 minutes to complete. Beebe's, a father of eight, said that his wife was less than impressed with the artwork and called him crazy. But his son Justin felt differently because he followed in his father's footsteps, getting a tattoo in the same exact place. Smack dab in the middle of his forehead. And just like his father, Justin got into some trouble and has a mugshot, which reveals the word psycho in plain black lettering. 8. Ronald Hayden and Abby Cat in 2012, a father and his two children were arrested in connection with a slew of bank robberies in the Portland, Oregon and Houston, Texas areas, which coincided with the family's move from one state to the other. The findings came when the Fort Bend Sheriff's Office in Texas charged 50-year-old Ronald Scott Catt, his son, 20-year-old Hayden, and his 18-year-old daughter, Abigail, for robbing a credit union. In their most recent robbery, Ronald and Hayden allegedly wore disguises and even carried guns before collecting the money and getting into a getaway car driven by Abigail. Detectives managed to trace orange vests that the men were wearing to a Home Depot store and connected them to the purchase. Community member Eric Lundeen was surprised by the arrest. He told ABC News that Ronald had seemed like a solid and responsible person and that he did a good job of being there for his kids after losing his wife and their mother. And it's true that by all appearances, the trio lived a typical middle-class American life. But the widower quietly struggled to hold steady employment and secretly had drug and alcohol addictions, leaving him desperate to increase the family's income. Ronald lost his job in 2011 and his house was foreclosed on, and he relocated to Texas after finding a new job there. Before joining him, Hayden went to Hawaii to work at a resort, and Abigail dropped out of school and moved in with her grandmother. By then, Ronald had already committed at least one bank robbery in Oregon. And when the kids rejoined their father in Texas, they began helping him carry out the heists. Ronald received a 24-year prison sentence, while Hayden was sentenced to 10 years and Abigail was sentenced to five years. Abigail was released after serving about three years, but was thrown in jail again just a year later for parole violations. Her brother and father are still serving out their sentences. 7. Caroline and Mariel Winand After receiving a call about a loud party in 2014, police in Naples, Florida busted the homeowner's daughter. 18-year-old Marielle Winand for throwing a wild bash. Officers later reported that the young woman came to the front door with the help of two friends because she was too drunk to answer it on her own. In fact, she could barely stand. She gave the police her mother, 56-year-old Caroline Winand's, phone number. Caroline acted surprised when she answered the phone and claimed that she was out of town. She permitted the officers to kick out anyone who wasn't supposed to be at the house. They obliged and began searching the home, during which time they found 20 teens attempting to hide. But the officers were shocked to find Caroline herself hiding inside, along with the underage kids. Once she realized she was caught red-handed, she tried to defend her decision to allow the party, claiming that the youngsters were safer with her around than they would be if they went and drank elsewhere. Police saw it differently and later said that Winand was lucky that none of the drunk partygoers tried to drive that night. Had that happened and had anyone gotten caught or, God forbid, gotten into a crash and hurt someone, Caroline could have faced more serious charges. She was hit with 26 counts of selling, giving, or serving alcohol to a minor while Mario was charged with hosting an open house party. While the outcome of the case is unclear, it appears as though the pair have moved past the incident. Caroline Winan's career as a successful realtor has remained intact. Mario works as an actress and has relocated to Los Angeles. 6. Cornelius Johans Ice and Cornelius Johans Albertus Ice 60-year-old Cornelius Johans Ice and his son with the same name, 
23-year-old Cornelius Johannes Albertus Ice are in some serious hot water with the law in South Africa for allegedly trafficking 39 Mozambican immigrants for farm labor. The father and son duo are accused of working with two brothers from Mozambique, 34-year-old Carlos Bernando Guambe and 32-year-old Gabriel Bernando Guambe, who've also been charged in connection with the illegal operation. The victims were reportedly recruited based on the promise of better jobs and a better life, and were brought to South Africa from Mozambique by taxi. Seven of the 39 individuals are women and nine are children under the age of five, while the remaining 23 are men above the age of 18. They were rescued from a farm in the town of Belfast in Mapamalunga province. Both father and son are being held without bail, along with the Gwembe brothers. The arrest will hopefully come as a hard-learned lesson that they can't skirt around the law to save on the costs of running a business. 5. Nicole Brooks and Isis Wallace A teenage girl's life was tragically cut short earlier this year when someone shot her to death in Bluefield, West Virginia. Police identified 43-year-old Nicole Brooks and her daughter, 22-year-old Isis Wallace, as their prime suspects. But the women were nowhere to be found sparking an interstate manhunt that came with warnings to the public that the suspects were considered armed and dangerous, and a $5,000 reward for information leading to their capture. The search ended six days later in Dover, Delaware, where the pair were found hiding out in a hotel. They were apprehended by U.S. Marshals, who received a tip that Brooks and Wallace were staying at the Mainstay Suites. Before capturing the suspects, the feds worked with the Dover police to conduct surveillance and confirm that the information was accurate. Both mother and daughter surrendered without incident. They're accused of shooting their victim while targeting some adults in a parked vehicle that was stopped at a red light. Authorities believe that the deadly encounter stemmed from a previous domestic incident between Wallace and her ex-boyfriend. The man's sister had driven up from North Carolina to get him after the spat and she brought her daughter with her. Sadly, the trip cost the teenager her life. Brooks and Wallace were extradited to West Virginia, where they both face a first-degree murder charge, along with charges of conspiracy and wanton endangerment. They're being held without bail as the case plays out in court. 4. Navasia Jones and Paul Fine Jr. On August 10th, 2021, Seven-year-old Julissia Batis was taken to a Bronx hospital after police responded to a 911 call and found her unconscious at home. She had no pulse and no vital signs. Doctors pronounced her dead within the hour and told police that the girl's body bore signs of trauma, indicating that someone had struck her with an object. Her death was ruled a homicide, and the medical examiner determined that she died from blunt force trauma and endured severe suffering in the hours leading up to her last breath. Following a nearly year-long investigation, prosecutors recently charged Julissia's mother, Navasia Jones, and her brother, Paul Fine Jr., in connection with the crime. They each face a charge of murder with depraved indifference which means that they're accused of having no regard for the little girl's life, even if they didn't specifically intend to kill her. The pair were also charged with manslaughter and acting in an injurious manner toward a child. Paul, Julissia's brother, faces additional charges related to horrific allegations of abuse he supposedly committed while she was alive. Sadly, there's a documented history of abuse in the home, according to NBC New York. Fine reportedly told investigators that he hurt his younger sister because he thought she stole his snacks. But the New York Times reported that Julissia's mother, Navasia, hit the girl's head on the desk and that she started getting sick hours later. Prosecutors have yet to disclose the full details of what happened, but they believe that both mother and son played a role in beating Julissia to death. They're also accused of failing to call 911 for at least three hours after the girl became unresponsive. The victim's father, Julius Batis, told NY1 News that he can't believe nobody stepped in to help his daughter at some point throughout her lifetime of suffering. Her grandmother, Yolanda Davis, said that she had tried to gain custody of Julissia in 2020, but was denied. 
3. Gerardo and Leobardo Zurita Police in Fresno, California are accusing 40-year-old Gerardo Zurita and his 19-year-old son, Leobardo, of co-conspiring in the recent murder of a relative. Gerardo allegedly drove a vehicle past the residence of his daughter, 21-year-old Stacy Zurita, and her partner, 25-year-old Raul Bobby Nunez, while Leobardo shot at least 10 rounds at the pair. Stacy and Nunez were both killed in the gunfire, which was captured on surveillance footage. Detectives have concluded that Stacy wasn't a target, but she nevertheless came into the path of a bullet. A spokesperson for the agency told the Fresno Bee that the double homicide came after a fight broke out between Nunez and members of the Zurita family. According to witnesses, a car resembling the one involved in the shooting had passed through the area earlier in the day. It's believed that the same vehicle returned later that night to commit the violent act. After the murders, the killers allegedly tried to conceal their identities. The elder Zarita shaved his head and facial hair, while Leobardo cut off his ponytail, according to Fresno Police Lieutenant Paul Cervantes. He further explained that while some of the people involved in the shooting may have ties to gangs, the crime itself was not gang-related. Authorities arrested the two men at their home and took them to the Fresno County Jail, where they were booked into custody on suspicion of murder. In addition to the charge for killing his own daughter and her boyfriend, Gerardo faces a DUI charge. The murder weapon has not yet been found. After interrogating the younger Zarita, detectives said that Leobardo was extremely remorseful for what happened and that he didn't mean to shoot his sister. But feeling sorry isn't enough. Both he and his father will soon have to answer to the law for the disturbing allegations against them. They each face two counts of murder. If convicted on all counts, they could receive the death penalty. 2. Lakeisha and Joshua Blakely the lifeless body of a teenage boy was recently found at Jesse Davis Park in Douglasville, Georgia. Investigators ruled his death a homicide. They charged 17-year-old Joshua Blakely with murder, aggravated assault, possession of a stolen firearm, tampering with evidence, and making false statements. His mother, 41-year-old Lakeisha Blakely, also faces numerous charges, including tampering with evidence, theft by receiving stolen property, and obstruction of officers. The investigation into the case is ongoing, but detectives have revealed that there was some type of relationship between Joshua and the boy who was murdered, whose name is not being released as of this time. A spokesperson for the Douglasville Police Department said that they're still trying to determine an exact motive for the crime, but they have clarified that the shooting was not random. Both Lakeisha and Joshua are being held pending their next court date. Sadly, the boy's death came as the second homicide of a young person in one week in the Douglasville area. In the tragedy's wake, Police Chief Gary Sparks reminded the community to look out for and protect the city's youth. He specifically called on parents to know what their kids are up to, who they hang out with, and to monitor their belongings and social media accounts. 1. Tara Gates and Cassius Giles Late last year, a 50-year-old Tennessee man named Willie Gates Jr. was arrested in connection with the shooting death of 57-year-old Jerry Yates Tiptonville. He faces a first-degree murder charge. But the crime is proving to be a family affair, as evidenced by the arrests of Willie's wife, 45-year-old Tara Gates, and her daughter, 19-year-old Cassius Giles, who were both put in handcuffs several months after the incident. Mrs. Gates and Giles are accused of threatening a witness into providing a false statement to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, TBI. Gates faces charges of aggravated assault, coercion of a witness, criminal conspiracy, and false report. Giles was charged with coercion of a witness, criminal conspiracy, and false report. The pair were booked into the Lake County Jail, and the case is ongoing. Thanks for watching. Would you rather find out that your sibling co-conspired with one of your parents to commit a petty theft, or hear that your best friend has decided to move halfway around the world to be closer to their parents? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe.